thank you for all that our eyes have heard or seen, all that our ears have heard, all that our hearts have felt. God, uh, continue to prepare us to receive your word with gladness. And we pray, oh God, that this word will make a difference in our life. Father, send someone in our pathway this week that we might share this word of gladness with. Now, Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm going to let you into a little something from my past. I had a nickname. Because older siblings are just so wonderfully horrible, right? <laughs> they nicknamed me Air Florida. Air Florida. Because I was clumsy as a kid, and oftentimes I would trip or fall. And they said I looked like a plane coming over the Florida horizon as I would make a landing on the ground. <laughs> but have some of you ever tripped before? Uh, Maybe over a threshold. Yeah, especially in our wonderful South Florida homes that have those, you know, step ups and step downs. And if you're not careful, you will trip trying to go into someone's living room. If you're not aware of what's happening, if you're not alert to your surroundings, you might trip and you hit that tile and mm, that shown up hurts. This weekend is like a doorway. It's like a threshold. A day where we mark the end of one thing and the beginning of something new. Today is what we call in the Christian calendar Transfiguration Sunday. It is our threshold out of the Christmas season, out of New Year's Eve, New Year's uh, resolutions that we don't really keep anyway. And it is a transition into the season of Lent, a time where we intentionally do some deep self-evaluation and reflection as we turn towards God in faith. Today, the Lord is giving us an opportunity, an opportunity to be attentive to his word, to let it speak to us right where we are at this threshold moment in our season of faith. This is our time to listen to Christ as we prepare to cross into the new season that God is calling all of us into. This is a time for us to look for transfiguration moments in our own lives. Let's get ready to cross over together. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's go to God's word. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. This is the word of God. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, there appeared to them Moses and Elisha talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them and from the cloud a voice said, this is my beloved son. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about this vision 
until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our text this morning occurs after Peter has made that powerful declaration that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. It is also six days after Jesus powerfully rebuked Peter for trying to talk him out of going to the cross to die and suffer for the sins of the world. So I don't know if this trip to the mountain was a reward for James, John, and Peter, or was it a remedial class on the divinity of Christ? But for some reason, Jesus only takes these three to the mountain for a soul-shaking, faith-building, intimate experience with him. So you know that point in every romantic movie? It's, it happens all the time. After the date, they go back to the, the woman's house, and she says something like, let me slip into something a little more comfortable. It happens in every movie, romantic movie, and we know what that means. We know what's going to happen next. You know, I imagine when Jesus told the disciples, let's go for a little walk. Let's go up on the mountain. I imagine that they knew they thought they knew what was going to happen. It was probably going to be what always happens. Maybe we're going off to pray, or maybe we're going to go do some ministry and, and go serve some people. You see, Jesus had taken James, Peter, and John, only those three, to go heal Jairus' daughter who had died. So I imagine they were thinking, eh, it's just going to be a typical day. I know what's going to happen. But when they get to that mountain, something quite different than what was normal occurred. Something that they would have never expected transpired up on that mountain. It was a moment of transfiguration physically, but I believe also spiritually for the disciples. You see, in that moment, Jesus seems to slip into something a little more comfortable. In that moment, he slips off his dull, meager garment of flesh, and he reveals all of his glorious, rich brilliance. It says his face was shining like the sun, and his clothes were a brilliant white. So white that Tide, Clorox, and Shout combined couldn't <laughs> get that white. <laughs> yeah, something happened up on that mountain. Sometimes in our journey of faith, we get in a rut. Sometimes as we are, are serving and trying to love God and love people, we get in this rut of prayer, I read some scripture, I go to church. Prayer, I read some scripture, I go to church. Prayer, I read some scripture, I go to church. It's, it's like we set the cruise control on our journey of faith and just veg out because, heck, we know what's going to happen. But God, God wants to send us transfiguration moments, moments to shake us up, to remind us to listen to Jesus Christ, not to settle for a mediocre Christian experience, but to be on high alert, to be sensitive to the move of the Spirit, be sensitive to the voice of God so that we can successfully cross over the threshold into this new season so that we don't trip. You see, the disciples on the mountain, they weren't ready to cross that threshold and they tripped hard. That's why Peter says the question, look, we can, uh, we can build you three dwellings and, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna do one for, for you and for, for Moses and Elijah. They tripped hard because they weren't ready to receive this transfiguration moment. It shook them to their core. You know, as disciples of Christ, we are guilty of that sometimes, right? We say, well, 
We've had this great mountaintop experience and we just want to stay in this holy huddle. We want to stay right here. We want to be safe because if we go down in the valley, if we go down the mountain, they don't really love us down there. They don't want to hear our Jesus talk down here, down there. So we want to stay up here. We're safe around people who think like us, look like us, love Jesus like us. Don't send us out into the world, but God gives us those mountaintop experiences, those transfiguration moments so that we can go down in the valley and serve, so that we can go into the, the dark, creepy hollers of the valley and be the light and hope of Christ. Yeah, we get our power on the mountain, but we need to exercise the power in the valley. Just like Jesus went away to quiet places to pray and get restored, he always came back to serve the people, to be around the people, to love on the people. We can't stay on the mountain. We have to keep crossing the threshold into this new season. So what is a transfiguration moment? It could look like this. You get an answer to something you've been questioning and wondering about, and you never prayed about it, and you never told anyone else about it. But bam, there's the answer. A transfiguration moment could be when, when you have this unexpected moment of laughter and joy while you're going through a very hard and difficult situation. A transfiguration moment could be when you know you have jumped headfirst into sin, and you have sinned against a brother or sister, but God in his mercy doesn't allow you to get the full consequences of what you deserve, but instead you're offered grace. And that person that you never thought would forgive you actually offered you forgiveness. Those are transfiguration moments that God sends into our life to shake us out of the rut and routine. You see those transfiguration moments when the old, old story of Jesus, uh, a holy man, a good man from Galilee, is transformed into a personal, intimate Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ becomes the, the King of Majesty, the glorious, anointed one who was and is and is to come. In these moments, the full truth of who Jesus really is and the full truth of why Jesus has come into your life becomes a reality for you when you have those transfiguration <clears throat> moments. God gives us these mountain top experiences so that we can go down to the valley that our lives can be a witness of what God is doing. You see, not only is Christ transfigured, but we too are called to be transformed, to transition and change in Christ. In Romans chapter 12, Paul talks about this. He says that we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing unto God. That is our act of worship. He then urges us to not be conformed to the world, not to be shaped as the world is shaped, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we might discern what the will of God is, what is holy and pleasing and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that means while our faces may not shine like the sun, and while our clothes may not trans, transfigured into something that's dazzling white, we can be completely renewed in our mind. We can be completely transformed. We can know and discern the will of God for our lives, for the lives of our family and friends. We can know the will of God for our church, know the will of God for our community. You see, hanging around Jesus is not just good enough. What did the voice of God say? It said, listen to him. We need to listen to Jesus. We need to hear the voice of our master. 
We need to, like the song says, love the people he loves and, and do the things that he did. We need to hear a word from the Lord because the more we listen to him, the more we become <clears throat> like Christ. We can live counter-cultural lives, lives of discipline and integrity and holiness, all while we're living in the valley, living in a world that is quite different than those qualities. Here we are, standing on holy ground. Here we are, standing at the threshold. Are you ready to cross over? <clears throat> Are you ready to take that step into the new season that God is calling you to? If not, ask God to renew your mind. Pray that the Lord will help you to have a renewed mind, to offer your body as a living sacrifice. Take this moment to get ready so you can move forward, listening to the voice of Jesus every step of the way. <clears throat> the songwriter said, take my life and let it be holy, holy, consecrated to me. God wants to power us. God wants to strengthen us. God needs us to go back down in that valley and be his life. Let's cross over. Let's cross over. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your call and your challenge to take us from one place to another. Help us to surrender to you in a fresh new way in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ.